Hey, Brian Horatsky here for the second installment of Lunch Talk with JT, Joe Paparato. All right, and today we are going to be talking about Jeremy Guthrie, the number two picture in the Orioles rotation to start the 2010 season. First off, JT, what do you think of Jeremy Guthrie? Uh, Jeremy Guthrie is a pitcher for the Orioles that, um, even though he does give a lot of runs, he does have a couple bad outings, but he's an innings eater. He's going to be one of those guys that's going to save the bullpen from getting uh, getting used a lot, and he's he's one of those guys that he, you can pretty much guarantee you he's going to give seven strong. He might give up five runs, but once he gets past that first two innings, he's solid after that. He's a pitcher that is really going to save the bullpen, which the world's going to need because you can have uh, our rookie pitchers going three innings and you're going to have to go to the bullpen. Jeremy Guthrie is going to be that guy that's going to keep our bullpen safe. Even though he might not have a great ERA, great record, he's going to help us out. Joe? Um, why don't you take this one? Well, I think if he can eat up the innings, like you said, and keep the ball in the ballpark, he needs to stop giving up the big innings and not just um, have a rough first and second. I think he needs to learn to get to pass the first and second. I, I, I'm expecting him to maybe return to form and that he was prior to last season because I always thought the, uh, the World Baseball Classic kind of messed him up because he was off his schedule. He never got the good spring training in. But, of course, he's fallen into the same patterns that – in spring training that he did during the season last year. Well, the main thing about Jeremy Guthrie also is that uh, he's developing a two-seam fastball, which he didn't have last year. And developing that two-seam fastball, it's going to hopefully prevent, if he can keep it low in this zone, he's going to get a lot more ground outs and not give up the big home runs. The last, year, the last two years, when he's been struggling, it's really been, he's been trying to overpower people with his fastball. Well, when the scouting reports out with you that you throw 96, and you can, he looks to get you out of that two, I mean, he's very predictable. And I think that with Weeders in there, Weeders needs to understand that he, he got to mix it up a little bit. And last year, I mean, if you look at it, all, I think pro, he gave up the most home runs, but most of his home runs were on high fastballs. And he right. just needs to, and that's why he's developed the two-seam fastball. He got rid of the curveball this year, or he's not throwing the curveball as much. He's going to more of a slider, which is going to also help. But also that slider, you got to keep it down the zone. It's going to be a lot with uh, just pitching down and low in the zone. I mean, it's easy to say, but he's got to produce it this year. Well, I know he ha he definitely has the stuff. I've never understood why the pitchers come up and they don't have a good two-seam fastball one. When it's obvious the four-seam fastball pitchers are the ones that get hurt a lot on the home runs. And it's a lot harder to hit the two-seam fastball because it has more movement. And, yes, they're giving up a little one or two miles an hour off it, but it's harder to hit. Yeah, and another thing with uh with him this year is that he's not going to be the Orioles number one pitcher. He's going to be uh, going. He's going to be the second pitcher, so he's not going to have to go against CCC Bass, CC the whole time. He's not going to have to go against number one pitchers. He's going to you know get to go against guys that are, you know kind of the same as he is. So yeah, um, I agree with him being the number two pitcher. Um, it feels like we don't have to rely on just him, and I think he knows that. Um, well, he, now we have Brad Bergeson. And yeah, he, yeah, he knows. He knows that you know he has a, a supporting cast in the starting rotation. You know, to, to to pick him up when he has a bad week. You know, he can't have a great week every week. And um, so, yeah. Well, do you guys think he's a good number two starter? I mean, I sure think looking at it, Tillman had a better spring training. He's going down to the minors. I think Mattis. He probably had the best spring training of the. Orioles, and he's going to be our fourth starter. And you have Bergeson, who, yeah, he's had a rough spring training, but he, he had a way better year than he did last year. So you think he's the number two starter or the number four or five? Uh, well, the thing is also uh, he – I think he is going to be a good number two starter. And also the thing with uh, the rookies is that – with uh, the Orioles had the most starts by it was like 90, I think they had 94 starts last year by rookie pitchers, most in the major league, and those rookie pitchers are going to be getting you know more used to it. And like like Joe said, I mean if you check out Joe's blog at Joe Pop, uh, at where, yeah if you check out Joe, Joe's blog, he wrote about that, saying how. Um, I mean, talk about what you said in your blog about uh, about the about Ferguson. I mean about the pitching staff, about Tillman. <laughs> Tillman. Well, all right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. Um, it's smart 
to have Tillman go down to the minors right now, and he may have been the favorite to be the fifth starter, but to me, he's 21 years old. He had a an okay start when he was 20 years old last season. If you send him back to the minors, work um, on the cutter. You work work on your cut fastball. You work on your mechanics. You 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 build everything. You improve. Bring him back up whenever he's ready. And I think in the meantime, David David Hernandez was the best choice in that decision. Well, so. um, if you saw my latest video, I, I I explained that I think that David Hernandez he earned it. He earned the. Uh, promotion uh, to get it I mean he had a better spring he had, he probably had he had around a three point oh ERA so I think he earned it but all right so back back to back to Guthrie um I think with Guthrie he's he's a good number two for what the Orioles have um you know we don't we don't have a strong caliber but I think he's a good number two for what we have in our um, for our team. 2008, he was 10 and two in 30 games. So it shows how many times he had no decision, or you know he didn't get past uh, five innings. And in 30 games, he gave up 77 earned runs. 2009, he was 10 for 17. Uh, in 33 games, and he gave up 112. That's well more. And I'm just, I'm a little worried he might follow that same path. He's only had, he's the only um, wins he's had, most wins he's had in one season is 10. And um, I'm a little worried he's got, he's got to fix his stuff. Well, I, I think the prior years it wasn't his stuff that really was his problem. It was he wasn't getting the run support. Our offense is much improved than it was in the past years. I mean, we have a good one through eight line up on any given night but four would be relying on the first couple the first four or five guys to get it done now we don't have to worry about that we have an awesome hitting catcher in Matt Weeders also he gave up 35 home runs and in, in 200 innings last season so he gives up the, he, he gives up uh, the long ball and he gives up those big innings and that's what he's got to that's what he's got to cut down on um Work with work with the uh, pitching staff and whatnot, but he's got to he's, he's got to figure out that two seamer. It's gonna basically make his make his game a lot more better, a lot more better. Yeah. Uh, and also with going back to our <clears throat> going back to the lineup, I mean you should be able to do something with the lineup when you have. I mean pr we pretty much know it's gonna be Roberts, and then it's probably gonna be Jones, Marcakis, and then you're gonna have um, Tejada. Tejada and. Uh, fifth or your fifth spot's going to probably be Luke Scott. I'm guessing. Luke Scott, yeah. Luke Scott, and, and Luke then, Scott's been having and a then great. Rimal. Right, and also I think that uh, one thing. Also, I don't think that Rymel will be playing that much. I think that Felix yeah. PA is stepping mm -hmm. it up. I mean, last year Felix PA, great end of the year. I mean, I remember listening to the radio and that people in Baltimore were just absolutely crushing him. And then all of a sudden, he just well, he got off to such a slow start. He did get off to a slow start, but they were saying get rid of him, get rid of him. And I think that everyone's looking at some someone like when he came in, there was a lot of pressure on him. He had to like you know perform, do what he had to do, and now the pressure's off him. There's not like a lot of pressure on him because he's because not expecting. Because they have a lot of bigger stars in right. the team, and he, they're not expecting him to have that big of a year this year. Uh, you know, they're looking more at Rymel. They're like, oh, you, they have the youngest outfield, great Adam Jones, Nick Marcakis, and Rymel. Well, that well, you have to, he can step. You have to there. remember last year with the, with PA, you had you had um, Montnez and Rymel just destroying the ball, hitting over 400, both of them, for the first month at Norfolk as well, the Orioles yeah, AAA affiliate. And one thing with AAA, though, you, I mean, I agree, I think, yeah, you do good at AAA, you should be able to do well, but I'm saying Felix PA was, he never went down to AAA, he stayed in the major leagues, he hung in there, he fixed what he was doing wrong, he was working with Terry Crowley, Crowley got him to start hitting the ball back up the middle, and then last year, I mean, the game that really turned around for him was hit for the cycles against the, uh, the Angels. And, I mean, it's just he has great speed. He has steel bases he, this year. And, uh, he's shown that in spring training he's hit a couple long balls. And he's just been playing solid defense. And I really think that you might be able to put him in there. And he can he's going to be able to produce. I think that Ryan will, might have a good year. He needs to get that Achilles heel take care of. But I'm not scared if he can't play. I'm very confident in P.A. P.A. All right. Speaking of. All right, this is Brian Ratsky with uh, Joe Paparato and JT. And this was our Lunch Talk segment number two.